Okay, so for our third section of chapter one, we're gonna talk about um, properties of functions, which is basically just building functions from functions or combining functions. And also we're gonna talk about composition of functions and also decomposing them, basically just separating them into two functions. So the first things we're gonna talk about is addition of functions. So the first, that's, mm -hmm. So the first property we're gonna talk about is addition. So it looks like this, f plus g of x, and it's basically just adding the two functions together. So f of x plus g of x, okay? Subtraction, same, so it's just f of x minus g of x. Multiplication, you're going to use FOIL because this will be f of x times g of x. And then your quotient rule will just be f of x divided by g of x. Now, with this one, you do have to take one extra step. You need to find the restriction, which basically is um, you set the denominator equal to zero and find what x cannot equal. Okay, we'll do a couple examples of that. All right, so first let's say our f function is going to be, let's say six x plus two, and our g function is going to be, let's say two x squared. So first let's do f plus g of x. Okay, so that's just going to be 6x plus 2 plus 2x squared. Okay, so you're just adding the two together. <coughs> okay, so now we're going to combine like terms. There's no other x squared, so 2x squared. No other x, so just plus 6x and no other constant. So just plus 2. All right, so now for subtraction. Okay, so we have 6x plus 2 minus, and now put the whole function in here, okay? Now this is kind of an important step when it comes to this function having more than one term, okay? Because you're gonna want to take the time and distribute that negative first but here, since we only have one term, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna go, so the negative goes to the two x squared, so we have negative two x squared, and then plus six x and plus two. Okay, so let's say it was, um, uh, let's reverse it. So we're gonna do g minus f of x, okay? So we're going to have two x squared minus 6x plus 2. Okay, so this is where you're going to want to distribute that negative first. So we get 2x squared minus 6x minus 2. Okay, nothing can be combined, so that is our answer. But it just to distribute this negative first just ensures that you're not going to make an error and forget to distribute the negative to the rest of the function. All right, so now for multiplication. Okay, so we got 6x plus 2 times 2x squared, right, 6x times 2x squared, so that's 12x cubed, 2 times 2x squared, so 4x squared. That's it. Now division. So 6x plus 2 over 2x squared. Okay, so first you're going to see can anything reduce, and it can, because everything is divisible by 2. So 3x plus 1 over x squared. And then don't forget, we have to find our restriction. So x squared cannot equal 0. 
square root both sides, so x cannot equal zero. So this is our answer right here. Okay, so now for composition of function. Okay, that looks like this. F open circle G of X. Or it looks like F of G of X. And that's exactly how you say it. So when you see this open circle, it's pronounced F of G of X f of g of x, okay? Basically, all you're doing is you're putting this function into any x of the f function, okay? That's all it is. You're just putting one whole function into any x of the other function, just like you would do if you were just plugging in a number. So if we had like x squared plus 2x plus 3, and we're trying to find f of 2, we would just plug in the two. Good grief. All right, so let's do an example. Let's say f of x is square root x minus 14, and g of x is 18x minus 31, okay? So first let's do f of g of x, okay? So we're taking this g function and putting it into any x in the f function. Right now we only have one. So square root, and then put in the g function, because right when we get to that x, we put in the g function, and then finish off your x function, okay? Now, reduce and combine like terms. Well, we don't have to multiply anything to this. So we have 18x, and now negative 31 minus 14 gives us negative 50, no, 45. Oof. Okay, now at this point, we still need to keep reducing, right? So we notice that 18 and 45 are both divisible by nine, okay? So let's do nine, so that leaves us with two x minus five. Okay, now since nine is a perfect square, we can actually square root it. So we have three, and then 2x minus 5 left under the radical. And that's your answer. Okay, now, what if our f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 2, and our g of x is... 2x, okay? 
we're still gonna do f of g of x, okay? So first, we start writing our f function, and when we get to an x, we input the g function. So immediately we write 2x squared plus three, got to another x, so we have to plug that in, and then finish off the f function, all right? So now reduce and do the math. So 2x squared gives us 4x squared, three times two, six x minus two. Nothing can be combined, so that is our composite function. All right, so now what about Okay, so now what about uh, breaking these functions apart, and I, I call it decom decomposing, but... Mm. Okay, so now what do you do if they give you a big function like this and tell you to find f of x and g of x if you were using, if you were... Okay, so now what about decomposing functions? Um, basically, they'll give you a big function like this and tell you, okay, find f of x and g of x. So let's do an example of what that would look like. So let's say f of g of x looks like 9 over x cubed plus 12, okay? And they want you to find what f of x could be and what g of x could be because you are going to have a couple different answers for this, okay? So the easiest thing that I do is I find the most complicated thing and take it out. So right now it's going to be this x cubed, right? So since the g of x is going into any x of the f function, let's just call g of x the x cubed, okay? So now when we go to write our f function, whenever we get to the x cubed, we're gonna write just x and then finish off the equation, okay? So now we can see if we put this x cubed in for the x of f function, it'll give us our composite function. All right, let's look at another one. Let's say f of g of x is Square root 2x plus 3 minus 4. Okay, so again, the most complicated thing is going to be everything under this radical. So let's say g of x is 2x plus 3, and then our f function is square root x minus 4. That's it.